Hello YouTubers. I figured with St. Patrick's Day rapidly approaching, we're going to jump back into another Irish favorite. This is an Irish tradition for St. Patrick's Day. And generally they have it year-round. But um, this is what we're going to be making is a loaf of Irish barn brack bread. Now, the way we're going to start off with this, let's see, we have our 225 grams of all-purpose white uh, flour in our bowl. To that we're going to add about 125 grams of brown sugar and um, of course in the recipe link below I can convert the grams to cups to um, for you guys instead of using the uh, metric system. So here we go. We have five, five. Perfect right there. So, a little over, a gram or two over, but that's not going to affect anything. So we have our 125 grams of um, sorry, I just wanted to double check and make sure it was 125 grams. So yes, we do have we have our 125 grams of sugar in there now. Now, the next thing we are going to add, and this bread takes about four days in total to make. The majority of that time is waiting time though, so don't get scared off. It doesn't actually take four days of actually bake making. So what I take, what I did yesterday, what you do the night before is you make, um, 250 milliliters, which is about eight to eight and a, eight and a half cups worth of a cold, cold tea. So you just make tea, leave it out to room temperature. So I took um, 250 milliliters, which is eight, a little over eight and a half, close to eight and a half cups of um, just freshly brewed tea that I brought cold. And then um, I put in 50 milliliters which would be the equivalent of, it's a, such a small amount when it comes to ounces that I actually used um, tablespoons instead. I just took about three, three and a third tablespoons of Irish whiskey. So you take that and you soak fruit, canned fruit, um, uh, any kind of dried fruit, soak it in there overnight. And then the next day, what we're going to do is put all that nice fruit that's now nice, plump, and we're going to put all of that right into the mixture. And it doesn't matter how much of this um, as you're picking it up. If you've got some in your hand, because we reserve this um, tea whiskey mixture for a, a reason anyway, we're gonna slowly add some into it later on. But um, we may or may not need the whole amount. It's just until we reach the consistency we're looking for. So if you get some in there for right now, not a big deal. So we put in our fresh fruit. Okay, so now we can take it off the scale. Um, yeah, we can take it off the scale. I don't think we have any more measurings to do. So what we're going to do now is just 
give this a nice lovely little turn very gently because this fruit is very plump right now you don't want to break the fruit apart so we're going to gently give this a nice little twist now to this we are going to add two teaspoons two teaspoons of baking powder there we go so we give this break down the brown sugar in theory I guess I should have broke down the brown sugar before I put in the fruit because I'm trying to break up the brown sugar but at the same time trying to be good and not damage any of this fresh fruit which has been soaking so long and it's very plump. But this is starting to come together just as lovely. Oops. Okay. So now what we do is now that this is a nice a nice gentle mixture right there right now. One egg. We're going to add um, one egg to the middle of the bowl. You could just set aside a little well in the beginning. And we'll just add that one egg into the middle. Kind of give it a nice little twist in the middle to break it up. And then we're just going to incorporate that egg through. This is going to be an amazing bread. A lot of people don't, in America at least, don't make this bread. And this is very traditional. Very traditional loaf made in Ireland. So, okay. Okay, so now that we got that as much as we're going to get, now is when we can slowly start to add the whiskey tea mixture. So, we want the consistency of a wet dough, basically. It doesn't have to be too wet, though. So we don't... Yeah, this is good. This is already starting to come together nicely. So maybe we will use the rest just as some dry... dry bits on the bottom. But now... While we're going to give this a quick run through with the mixing, we're going to put in a half of a teaspoon of um, mixed spices. Now, this one I got um, from Amazon. It's from Boston Spices. Um, because I know uh, Irish mixed spices are mixed spices it's not commonly found around here an alternative to going online to amazon for this um you can make your own they're all they're all common spices it, it's more it's more or less like almost like a pumpkin pie seasoning type of thing or um like something you would use in the fall it's got a lot of like cloves and but um i like the real thing so I usually buy it because I'll use it year-round and um, it was cheap enough to just grab one of those bags off of Amazon. Okay, so now the bread is coming together. So at this point, I grab my loaf tin. Grab my spray, and I'm just going to give this a quick little spray. Okay, 
and now we're going to incorporate all of this delicious bread batter. Yes, I am. I am one of those people that will try and scrape every single drop as possible out. Because this is all just goodness you would be leaving behind. So we're going to scrape. There we go. Now. The tradition that I am with barn brack bread is you're supposed to bake a ring into it, but since this is more going to be for my family, um, I'm going to leave the ring out. But there is an Irish tradition behind this bread that does involve baking a ring into the bread. Uh, I could talk to you about that a little bit more in a minute. But we are just about to get this put into the oven. Okay. Okay, so give it a nice little shake around. Have out some of these air bubbles. Not there should be many. And that looks nice and flat and even. So this just pops right into oven. I have the oven already preset. 325 degrees. And now we're just going to let that bake for about an hour. So I will get some cleaning up done around here. And I will see you all back in about an hour with the finished product. Okay, now here we have the final product all cooled and taken out of the oven. And just look at that. That looks beautiful. And I can't wait to cut into that. I'm going to let it settle for a few minutes right now. Wrap it up in aluminum foil. Let it sit for a couple hours. And we're ready to eat. Enjoy.